Nia Matalolo is our guest. Coach Ken, how are you holding up during this uh, very unique time, the last 10, 11 weeks? Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Um, I'm actually doing okay. I'm actually here in Hawaii right now, so, but we're doing fine. How different are things in Hawaii? You're a Hawaii native and spent so much time there uh, coaching. How different have things been there compared to what you're hearing on Zoom calls and other communication with your coaches and players back here in the contiguous 48 states? Well, we're practicing social distancing and uh, like everybody else and having all of our safety precautions. Um, but it's actually okay here. Uh, I think for, I think for the last couple of days, the case have been very minimal. I think one or zero. Um, I don't know if it's the sun, you know, that helps over here. But uh, I know people here in the state have been doing a really good job with legislation and laws to try to make sure just um, education to help us to make sure that we're all safe here. It's so important, too. And Hawaii is such a great football culture. We'll just take an off-ramp here for a minute. We talk constantly about players who come from the island, players who uh, have this great Polynesian heritage. It's something you've been close to for generations, and you live. What is it about football and Hawaii that has given us, uh, in a positive way, disproportionately so many good players for the number of athletes that are over there playing high school football? Uh, I think, you know, I don't know if it's innate, but um, people have always played uh, rugby for many years prior to American football. I think Polynesians mm -hmm. love contact sports. Um, so the physicality of the game, you know, it's, it kind of fits us. And so we enjoy that part of it. But I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. But uh, there have been obviously a lot of good football Polynesian players. There's so many good players uh, come from a few terrific programs as we've seen in Hawaii, just think of Tua Tango Vailoa, his family as well. Coach, it has uh, been a pleasure for us to cover Navy when you have played Notre Dame, the chance to come to Annapolis and, and see the amazing collection of individuals who are there. I, I'm sure it was uh, understandable but disappointing news that was shared this past week that uh, the Navy Notre Dame game scheduled for Ireland will not be played in Ireland, but the positive out of this is that Navy will play at Marine Corps Stadium there at, at, in Annapolis for the first time ever, which is uh, going to be some unique experience if it does end up happening around Labor Day weekend. Well, yes, we were disappointed. Um, you know, it's, but the last time we went to Notre Dame, uh, besides the three hours of the game, it was actually a really good visit. You know, my wife got to visit castles and things, but we got beat up pretty good. <laughs> and um, obviously mm -hmm. Notre Dame beat us pretty good last year. And so we're excited to play here. They're going to be the best team we play all year. And uh, it's still going to be a really, really hard game for us, but we're excited. Coach, with uh, everything that's going on in the country, not just the pandemic, but all the racial issues that have come to the forefront here with uh, George Floyd's killing in Minnesota. Coaches have been asked to take a, a very direct role in checking in with their players and listening. W what has it been like as you've had the opportunity to do that, uh, not just in the last couple of weeks, but when this pandemic started, uh, with a group of men who have so much on their plate as uh, those who have been a part of the Naval Academy experience, in, in addition to being football players? Well, Mike, we had a team meeting two days ago, and I've been coaching for 31 years, um, 13 years ago, my 13th season as a head football coach, and it was the best meeting that I've ever been involved with. And really, it was just an open forum for my players to be able to talk. Uh, the majority of my team are, are black young men and be able to hear their opinion and what they thought, but also to hear some of our white players and other players of other races speak. But it was one of the most productive, um, best meetings I've ever been with. It just, I just came away from that meeting. All I could say is, wow, it's just a super special meeting. 
Coach K, what made it good? Was it the honesty of the players? Was it their messaging? What, what made it so unique in all the meetings you've had in the past? The honesty, the messaging, I think for our white players to hear our black players, you know, describe what it's like for them and things that they've had to endure growing up as eye opening, you know, and these are guys that they know very well, you know, they are in the same locker room, they live together, but they still don't know the things that they go through. Um, having one player explain that after the, after the Trayvon Martin incident a couple years ago that, you know, his parents had to teach him, you know, about not wearing a hoodie when you go in the store, don't have your hands in a pocket. And I think just all the other players, you know, like, I mean, that's foreign to them. It's foreign to me as a father. I can't imagine that those are the kind of discussions that you have to have with your kids, but those are reality. So I think those kind of things are just, um, just the honesty. Uh, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of hurt. And, it, you know, it lasted about an hour, Mike. And it was basically the players talking. And the most productive meeting, educational meeting I've ever been in. Wow, that's, uh, that's powerful in a week of uh, a lot of powerful experiences for a lot of coaches and a lot of players as well. And I'm going to leave you with this. We only have a few seconds, but uh, patriotism and duty to country bring together your football team. Football coaches are all about unity, and you have people who are united uh, beyond words or photo opportunities. They are united in their dedication to the country, and they come together in a unique way as a group of young men compared to all the other college football teams. No disrespect to the other teams, but the Navy experience is pretty special. What is it about that experience that keeps you there? Because you've had offers at a lot of places. What keeps you connected to the Naval Academy? Just what you said, Mike. Just, I feel like I can have an influence on these young men, and they're great young men. And some of the things that they're able to do, not only for their own families, but in our country, if we can just put a little bit in this whole piece to make this a better world, it's more than winning games. But if I can have just a small piece in helping these young men go out and be better husbands, fathers, teach their children, uh, you know, these kinds of cases with racism or anything, just to help them be better people, I feel like I've been a successful coach more than winning games. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.